Okay, to try to diagnose the problem I'm having with the pen lifting mechanism on my LX draw, I've taken the whole of the pen lifting me mechanism off the front there. I've actually stripped the servo out of the mechanism. Um, I've attached it standalone to the control board here. So I'm going to run the thing. I'm going to get it to draw a little circle. There's no pen in there, obviously. But what I want to do is see what this servo actually does now that it's detached from the whole of the mechanical parts. When I initially took it off, this servo wouldn't move at all. But it does actually move now. Anyway, we're going to run it off the machine and see what results we get. Right, the servo is trying to move beyond the end of its travel. That's interesting. Okay, so what we've got now is a, just an ordinary servo that I just happen to have lying around, rigged up to the board. So if this does the same thing as the micro servo, then we start to suspect there's a problem with the board or the firmware. If this one works fine, then we think it's the servo. So... interesting that is jammed in the zero position okay we may be getting somewhere now uh, because I've just read a post on the Alexdraw forum where somebody said did you send an A1 code via the Alexcam application and I admitted no I didn't but I also had no idea I was supposed to do that so anyway I tried sending this A1 code which switches it from laser mode to servo and now when I get it to try, it thinks it's drawing something. The servo is behaving in some kind of sensible fashion. So, that starts to look a bit more promising. So let's put it all back together and see if we're getting somewhere. Okay, so all reconfigured, reassembled, rejigged, ready to go. Here we go, let's give it a try. It works. It works. Now it does rely on the weight of the pen to hold it against the paper and that's why we had a little bit of trouble here with some of the writing, but it works. Okay, so I got the thing fully working now and I did find I had to add a little bit of counterweight if I'm using a ballpoint pen because it lifts the pen off the paper but it relies on gravity to press it down onto the paper. So I had taped a battery onto the pen and that worked just fine. You can fix pretty much any kind of pen in the device and it will draw with anything that you can draw with your hand really I suppose. So after all of that you might be thinking isn't this just a kind of inferior printer? What use is it? Well I guess the point is it can do a few things that a traditional printer can't. So it can print with print media that a normal printer can't. So we can use things like markers, paint pens, it can print directly onto things that won't go through a printer. So I can use it for marking out parts directly onto metal, or I could use it for customising things. I could use a Sharpie and I could have it draw something directly onto the lid of my laptop. It can make things that look hand-drawn. So we can mass-produce Christmas cards or something like that and make them look as if we drew them ourselves. Maybe that's cheating, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's also, it's cool, it's fun, it's educational. It's a robot. It's not just about the end, it's about playing with the thing and about having some fun exploring what we can do with it. Let's have a think about the overall impression I've got of this thing. Now I've got to the end of it and I've got it working and I've got a usable machine. So the good parts, the mechanical engineering is high quality. When it's fully assembled and working, it's worth having. It's nicely built, nicely engineered. 
The accuracy and precision of the drawing is actually very good. It's very precise. They're not so good. I think I've probably said enough about that in the early part of this video and in previous videos, so I'm not going to cover that again. You can go back and see the links and see the journey that brought me here, if you like. So, in summary, should you buy one? Well, you've got to decide that for yourself based on what you see here and perhaps elsewhere. But ask yourself a couple of questions. Firstly, am I prepared to spend a few hours assembling it? The assembly was not particularly complex. I wasn't expecting to assemble it and that was a point of disappointment for me. But if I bought it knowing it was a kit, I think actually I could have had quite a lot of fun assembling this. The other question you should ask yourself is, am I prepared to tinker with it until it works? This has been quite a journey. I've had to call on support from the place I bought it. I've had to call on support from the forum and the answers were not there immediately. I think probably now, if you bought one and read up on the forum and got a little bit of help from people on the forum and read the instructions, I reckon you'd probably get to the answer a lot quicker than I did. So make your own mind up. I'll put a link in the video description. Take that all under advisement and make your own decision. So I've quite enjoyed getting to the end of this project. I hope you've enjoyed watching the journey. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.